In this video, we're going to take a look at the Jackery 1500. I've gotten a lot of requests to review this unit, and I'll give you my honest take now that I've had a chance to kind of play around with this for a little while. I reviewed a number of these type of devices over the years, and they each have their own unique features. Now, we'll be upfront and let you know that there are things that I like about this unit and things I'd like to see improvements on in future models from this company. And at the end of the video, I'll give you my overall take on this unit, so stick around until then. Now, while this unit with the solar panels was sent to me free of charge, I am under no contractual obligation to hype it up or to steer you toward buying this over any other option on the market. Having said that, I think this unit does fulfill the needs of some looking to get into a backup power source that can be recharged from solar panels. If you're interested in picking up one of these, I will post a link in the description and comment section below. Now, based on the information in this video, hopefully you can make your own decision whether it's a right fit for you or not. So let's jump in. Technical aspects. For starters, it puts out 1800 running watts and 3600 surge watts. For the non-technical people out there, running wattage is the amount of electricity necessary to run your appliances continually. Surge, or starting wattage, is the additional amount of electricity needed for about two to three seconds to start electrical motors commonly found in household appliances. You get 1,488 watt hours, which is in the upper middle range of these units. A watt hour is a measure of electrical energy equivalent to a power consumption of one watt for one hour. That is an improvement over previous Jacker units. As we know though, these numbers are always optimal at optimal conditions. Actual times, they tend to vary, and that variance on any generator is always lower and not higher. It weighs 35 pounds or 14 kilograms, so it's not necessarily the lightest, but a wide handle makes it easier to carry. So based on all the information presented, what does this mean for non-technical folks out there? It means that even with no replenishment input from solar panels, this unit will run a mini cooler for about 26 hours. Without any replenishment input, it will run electric grills, microwaves, pressure cookers, or coffee makers continually for over an hour. To put this in perspective, you could power a blender on high for about over an hour. You can power up to seven devices simultaneously. You can run LED lights and charge small electronic devices for probably days and days. You have one USB-C and two USB-C ports, three AC outlets, and one DC car outlet. It takes four to five hours to completely charge a Jackery with four 100 watt solar panels or a wall outlet. And it will take 13 hours to fully charge it with a car outlet. If you plan on using this as a backup in your house for when the power goes out, you will be glad to know that you can leave it plugged in to the wall to charge. This unit will support what's called pass-through charging. The fan on this unit is about average for these type of devices. Any inverter of any brand is going to be a little noisy. At about 56 decibels, it's audible, and that's twice the level of whisper and about the same level as your household refrigerator. You hear it, but also easily tune it out and don't notice it after a while. The fan isn't always on, but it will kick on when the inverter kicks on. It has a second fan in there if you're already pushing the unit's capacity. That will take it to about 75 decibels, which is equivalent to a vacuum cleaner, but personally, I don't think it was that loud. It has an estimated total battery life of about 8 years. It has an 800 cycle to 80% capacity set of batteries. That means over the course of 800 cycles, you can expect it to lose the top 20% efficiency of the battery. Don't throw it out though, because you'll get 8 solid years of use out of it even after the run time goes down to 20%. 800 cycles is a long, long time for casual users. Display and other features. The display on the Jackery 1500 is an improvement over the previous units. If you ever have looked at a generator display and only seen incomprehensible numbers that made no sense to you, you'll love the more intuitive approach they used here. You get a clear visual display of the input and output power along with the battery icon. If you do not want to do all the calculations on every device you're gonna plug in, this remaining power level meter will allow you to plug in different devices. Turn them on and instantly know what gadgets will drain your battery the fastest and which are the most efficient. On the side of the unit is a built-in flashlight. Each output section has its own activation button. And again, there's a nice digital readout on the display's bottom right that will tell me exactly how many hours of charge I have. There's no math for me to do. Additional accessories. The basic unit is a Jackery Explorer 1500 package with one car charge cable and one AC and DC adapter. You can use up to two AC adapter cables, which get the charge down to two to three hours. As a home emergency solution, that right there is enough to keep you powered for minor outages. If you think you'll be without power for an extended period of time, however, it's worth the investment in the optional solar package upgrade. That will give you four SolarSega 100 watt panels, 
that plug into your two input devices on the 1500. This will make you energy independent so long as the sun is shining. With the input gauges on the Jackery, aligning your panels for maximum efficiency as a breeze. The solar panels are designed with an integrated kickstand, magnetic snap closures, an outdoor cloth backing for a little bit of protection, a pocket, and a built-in handle. This makes it much easier to carry, load, unload, and set up than your average panel. They're also waterproof. There's a USB-A and a USB-C port built right into the back of the solar panel, so I can charge devices right off of it independent of the jacker unit. These ports on the panel are inside the back pocket, so I can put my charging device right in the pocket. One thing to note, this is built to be a kind of plug and play. That's both good and bad. If you want to use other panels, you may lose efficiency. The 8mm input into the jacker units is proprietary. The center pole is too large for a standard adapter. You have to use a Jackery parallel adapter for two panels. If you want to use solar panels that aren't Jackery's, you're going to run into quite a few hurdles. You'll also find that Jackery's panels are better built and charged faster than many panels of the same output specs. Testing it out. Car charging this isn't necessarily great. I tried it in my SUV in a friend's Tacoma truck. The truck had a better output with the AC adapter, but the charge time was over 7 hours in my SUV. The truck had more output, 263 watts, and brought that to a respectable 3 hours. If you're driving somewhere, that's great. But if you're wanting to charge this up by running your car, don't count on it. You would burn too much vital fuel in the process. I was also interested in how well this charged up with the separately sold upgrade to the 45-cell solar Sega 100-watt solar panel set of 4. After all, in a grid-down situation or a situation where the power was down for a few days or a week or more, this would be a big deal in my consideration. We can't run our car engine, obviously, for 13 hours to get this charged up. It was easy to plug it all together and set it up. My first solar charge test with all four panels was during the evening sun, which was filtered through trees, so not ideal by any means. Still, it was pulling 53 watts with a 15-hour charge time to full from where the battery system was currently charged. I only had about an hour's light left. It was charging at a trickle, which really wasn't ideal. My second test was early in the morning. Clouds obstructed the sun, but this may be similar to what many encounter in northern regions. Just two panels pulled a better 137 to 144 watts and brought the charge time down to 9.8 hours. That's pretty good considering they peak at 200 watts output. The second set and even not so perfect morning light had the 400 watt total coming in at a respectable peak of 250 watts and brought my charge time down a little over six hours from where the current charge level was. That still wasn't good enough for me, though that's decent for most practical purposes, and most can get by on that. So, I set all the panels up in my yard in full sun. They were super efficient then. With 400 watts peak performance, they were combining for around 340 with a peak of 372 watts for a 3.2 hour charge time. That's really, really good. After a disaster, I could get this battery up to 100% in just over 3 hours from where the current charge was with direct sunlight with the 4 panel 100 watt system set up. There are two things to note here. First, Jackery does market 200 watt monocrystalline solar panels, and this will reduce the charge time and be much more efficient, though they are much larger, almost 8 feet long when unfolded. They're also 18 pounds each instead of just 9 pounds for the 100 watt panels. I think the portability and deployment of these 100 watt panels are acceptable for most situations. Second, these photovoltaic cells are a wireless series. That means that if you shade one of the cells, you will significantly diminish the production from that panel. Here I have just one panel plugged in and is generating a respectable 90 watts. I cover one cell completely with my hat, which dropped the panel's output to 27 watts, a one-third of its peak performance. If you're going to be in partial shade or non-direct sunlight, the output of these panels will drop. Still, if you know that you will have sun, the solar package is a great option. They're highly portable and they put out good efficiency. If you've ever lugged around traditional monocrystalline solar panels, you can appreciate these panels. If you have no experience with solar panels, you will enjoy how easy they are to carry, set up, plug in, and get charging. Even if you don't want to add on a solar package, the final consideration is a home unit. With this plugged into my wall, the wattage input charged at around 263 watts. If I have thoughtfully considered the wattage requirements of my emergency devices, and I have the means to cook, communicate, and have some LED lights, I could stretch this emergency power source out for days, even without the sun. That, to me, is an excellent peace of mind. If you're an overland trekker, RVer, camper, or you're just looking for a home emergency power station, this is an option worth considering. 
Jackery has done the thinking for you and built this unit with the user in mind. I think that's great for most of us. It allows you to easily turn your attention to the devices you need to be able to plug into if there were a disaster. Low draw, high efficiency LED lighting, an efficient hot plate or heater, an electric blanket could all plug in and would easily have gotten most people through the recent outage in Texas. Low temperatures, however, will present challenges recharging. A mini refrigerator, fans, swamp coolers, and LED lights can all plug in in hot climates and heat waves. Plus, your ability to solar charge will likely be higher, so long as you keep your unit under 104 degrees, possibly by keeping the jackery itself in the shade. However you use it, I'm confident it will run most of the small devices you want to run off of it. For the price point, it's slightly under competitors and decently priced. It's a suitable unit for most applications and most users, and I would recommend it to anyone who just wants an all-in-one package, easy-to-deploy system. So now that we've covered the basics, here are my final thoughts. Overall, it's a solid unit. If you're looking for simplicity and ease of use, they've thought this through. Now, these are popular with the overlanding, camping, and RV community, and I can honestly see why. A couple of things I'd like to see addressed in the future is for them to first switch their solar input connectors to industry standard connectors. At the moment, they've got the 8mm input connection, which we mentioned in the video. You can get around this if you want to use your own panels by purchasing adapters that allow you to connect solar panels that have MC4 or Anderson connectors, but obviously there's a fee for those adapters. I'm assuming they did this to ensure the unit will work correctly with the solar panels they provide, plus the obvious, which is that they want you to use their solar panels over the competitors. Now, the second thing I'd like to see on these units is in future models for the manufacturer to make these expandable. The main solar generator manufacturers on the market, EcoFlow, Blue Eddy, and Energy, they're all making their units expandable with additional batteries. But if that's not a concern for you, then fine. One word about whether it will power your specific needs, a question that always comes up whenever I do these type of videos. Um, I did a video recently where I went into great detail about this specific question, and I'll post a link in the cards above if you want to check that out. I highly recommend you view that video before purchasing one of these to ensure it will meet your needs. Jackery, they sell three models, the 1000, the 1500, and the 2000. Now, if you're interested in a Jackery model, be sure to watch that video first. And also, if you'd like to support the channel, if you do decide to buy one of these, the link to buy this will be in the comment section below. What do you think? Have you used a Jackery portable power station? What's been your experience with it? I know that user feedback is essential to me before I make any purchase, so it's likely that others will appreciate your feedback as well. Let us know your experiences in the comments below so others can read. I try to read many of the comments and respond to them when I can. That's typically within the first hour of releasing a video. I can notify you when other videos become available if you take that step to subscribe to the channel. As always, please stay safe out there.